And then there's a stunt show called The Eighth Voyage of Sinbad, because the Clash of the Titans remake left a tiny, tiny bit of room on Harryhausen's memory for other things to shit on. Eh, at least we get to sit for this show. Sinbad enters the cave heroically on a conveniently placed zip line, then grabs a conveniently placed sword while his wacky sidekick Kebab, yes, Kebab, comes in from the opposite direction on a boat. You know, you're always playing around when there's work to do. In fact, why the hell did I bring you along, you waste of space? Hey, Sinbad, up here! That was better than Dragon Challenge. <laughs> Dude, that wasn't even as good as Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster. So, Kebab's personality is he's greedy when he forgets to be scared, and he's scared when he forgets to be greedy. And he's dumb. And he makes pop culture references. I pity the fool! This place is cursed! <laughs> no, no, this place is cursed! The Chish Kebab! Was it worth it, Universal? Was it worth it? But then the token captive princess appears! Look, just die, okay? Well, come on, boss! Time to go! Come on! What? One good reason why. Well, okay, here. Now uh, <laughs> well, that's my kind of reason. Oh, uh, what? Kebab already knew they had the treasure whether they saved her or not. How was this a motivator for him? Uh, don't worry, Princess. I'll get the Sultan's heart and set you free. So, our hero we've been given no reason to care about passes through trials we have no reason to fear until he retrieves the magical ruby known as the Sultan's Heart. This is real. <laughs> But then the token captive princess is swapped out for the token evil witch. What fools these mortals be! Hey, a Shakespeare reference. Maybe this won't be entirely lowest common denominator. Lady Gaga? That's it, I quit. She uses a bewitch sound effect while the princess wears an I Dream of Genie cosplay. I'm pretty sure that's a conflict of interests. Well, that's typical. You give a girl a big rock and bam, she turns into a witch. <laughs> it's so true. Women are subhuman creatures who exist solely to frustrate men. We're trapped. On the sword. Right. Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm all about the pointless Star Wars references, but. Doesn't it seem like Universal makes way more than you'd expect from a park that's in direct competition with the Force? Yoga? No, Chewbacca! <sighs> I'm shocked that Vader never appeared in the Back to the Future ride. <laughs> so they rescue the princess, who mutters like olive oil. Did they want to put this in Toon Lagoon originally? <laughs> But the witch summons her minion, and they fight. And the princess fights the minion too, because... Strong female character? Not bad. Thanks. For a girl. But ultimately, the thug is defeated through the power of comic relief. I mean, the exact same thing happened to him that happened to the monster we were convinced is no longer a threat. But I'm sure that exact same fate wouldn't incapacitate someone on our side. Anyway, the witch summons another minion, because it worked so well the first time. This is a strange revival of Annie Get Your Gun. The only way out of here is through hell. Meet your tour guide. Tour guide on a hell ride? Oh man, Jerk already used a skipper damn joke. Another minion! This one's a baton twirler! I guess the princess stopped being tough. And the bad guy is just as confused as I am about what the hell's going on. And this is the obligatory part of the show where any inconsistently written comic relief character will start interacting with the audience while the bad guy sneaks up on him. Also, farts. 
The princess is once again a tough action chick. And Kebab continues to be creepy and annoying. suddenly very scared of this location that was clearly my destination. Stay here. I'll get up on it. I'm not staying here with the monsters and the skeletons and the treasure. Treasure? Kebab is distracted by the treasure long enough for the witch to show up and... not actually do anything to Kebab. Except mention that the thug is coming back again, so Kebab and the thug can do the he's behind you gag once again. The joke's so nice they do it twice. There's no one behind me. Then more wacky chasing, and once again Kebab defeats the thug right before falling into the exact same hole. Because new things happening over the progression of a story is overrated. Oh hey, Sinbad's in the show. Why let Kebab have all the pointless comic relief? Okay, all the characters are here again? Good, can something happen now? Sinbad, come on! Yeah, maybe it's a ship. No reward is worth this! Dude, Disney has Star Wars. They've had it in the park since 1987, and they've had it wholesale since 2012. Let it go. It's over, just as Animaniacs predicted, even if they had the wrong dynasty. The studio of Moss Eisner. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. And the minions are all defeated through the power of high dives. No! Nobody in this show ever shuts up. They just keep babbling and babbling, tossing out barely applicable pop culture references like Robin Williams with a concussion. I know I'm not one to judge when it comes to over-reliance on pop culture references, but my god, please tell me I'm not this annoying. No, you're definitely that annoying. Yeah, you're pretty much the worst. Ah, thanks for that. Maybe I should have asked someone who isn't one of my siblings. But Kebab steals the witch's magic stick, and Sinbad uses it against her. So be it, Jedi. Okay, that one might have been a coincidence, but historical precedents would suggest otherwise. And Sinbad saves the day by turning the witch into Denethor. Oh, thank God, we'll all be crushed to death as the cave is collapsing. This is no cave. Damn it, you got me doing it. You are not Han Solo. And the hero gets the girl, because that's what happens in other stories. You put the sin in sin, man. Not the syllable I'd emphasize. And what better way to end the show than another wacky pratfall, proving that the earlier repetition without escalation was just a forced setup for the rule of threes. But... I don't even care, the show is finally over. And the audience is clapping. And they were laughing throughout the show too. More people probably see this show in a day than have seen all of my videos put together. And most of them seem to be enjoying it. Once again, I am the asshole going out of my way to complain about a show that doesn't appeal to me. But it's not just me, right? I appreciate slapstick and well-crafted pop culture references. I appreciate the stunts in the show, and I'm sure these stunt performers deserve a far better script. A good script costs the same amount of money to write as a bad script, why is that the one area they were scrimping on? 